In this video, you're going to learn how to convert from rectangular equations, equations in the form where there's an x and a y, to a polar equation where there's just an r and a theta. So we're going to go through four examples together. Let's dive in. The first thing we want to talk about is the relationship between rectangular and polar. And that can be seen clearly here in this diagram where with a rectangular point, we locate that point by going left and right, up and down, that's our point, the x comma y. But if we were to draw a radius of a circle out to that point, that r is the distance from the origin there to the, to the point, and we have this angle theta, which is our angle of rotation with that positive x-axis. But you can see that there's a triangle that's formed, a right triangle, and we can see this relationship, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem. So in this case, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, theta, you can see we've got the tangent of theta equals y over x, okay, because tangent's opposite over adjacent. And if we want to find the angle, we can take the tangent inverse of y over x. We can also do the cosine of theta equals x over r, see cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse. And if we multiply both sides by r, we get x equals r cosine theta. And if we do the sine of theta, we get opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is going to be y over r. Multiply both sides by r, we get y equals r sine theta. So these are some relationships that we're going to use in converting from rectangular equations to polar equations. So starting with example number one, we've got x squared plus y squared equals 121. You might recognize this as the standard form of the equation of a circle. But notice x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So let's go ahead and replace this with r squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, r is equal to 11. And so really, in polar form, r equals 11 is a circle with radius 11. This is also the equation of a circle with radius 11. You can see the polar form is a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, a little bit more condensed way of writing it. Let's go to example number two now. Here we've got the line y equals 7. We know y equals 7 is just like a horizontal line like that. But how do we write it in the polar form? Polar just means we're going to eliminate the x's and y's. We just want r's and thetas. And so what we can do here is we can say, well, I know that y is equal to r times the sine of theta. And we can see that from this triangle relationship here. But I'm just going to make a substitution. y equals r sine theta. And just like how when we worked with uh, equations earlier, like in Algebra 1, a lot of times we would get the y by itself. We'd say y equals mx plus b, or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Here with polar, oftentimes we're going to get the r by itself. And so what we can do is we can divide the sine of theta, or divide both sides by sine of theta, to get r by itself. And you're going to be left with r equals 7 divided by the sine of theta. But you probably remember when you talked about trig identities that what's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant, right? So 1 over sine is equal to cosecant. So this actually can condense down a little bit further to 7 times the cosecant of theta. If you were to graph this on your graphing calculator, just convert to your polar form, r equals 7 over sine theta or 7 cosecant theta, you'll see that you get the same horizontal line. It's just a different form. This is polar. This is rectangular. Let's look at example number three. Now this one, we have y equals square root of three x. Okay, so this one, we know that y is equal to r sine theta. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. x is equal to r cosine theta. So let's make that substitution. We can divide both sides by r. Okay, so that cancels out. And we could divide both sides by cosine theta. Now you might be saying, Mario, uh, why are you dividing by cosine theta? Well, sine over cosine, I know that's equal to tangent. So tangent of theta equals square root of 3, right? And if I take the tangent inverse of both sides, theta equals the tangent inverse of square root of 3. Now you know from the unit circle, tangent of what angle equals square root of 3? Well, that's a 60 degree angle, or in radians, that's pi over 3. So this is really theta equals pi over 3. And I know I said in this last example, we normally try to get r by itself. In this case, you can see there's not an r in this equation. And what this means is that theta is equal to pi over 3. So if you look at your uh, polar graph paper, okay, like this, 
If we're at an angle of pi over three, that's 60 degrees, say the radius is one, you'd be right here. Say the radius is two, you'd be right here. Radius is three, radius is four. You can see we're getting a line and that's what this is here, y equals square root three over x. So it's a line that goes through the origin because you can see y equals mx plus b, the b is zero. And the slope is square root of three over one. That's the slope of this line. So two different ways to write, uh, to, to describe the same line. One is in polar, one is in rectangular. Okay, and then the last example, number four, very similar to number two. We know that x equals r cosine theta, so let's make that substitution. Now, sometimes students will say, Mario, how do I know what to do? Well, just remember, you're trying to get rid of x's and y's. You only want r's and theta's. So it's just like when you do with the trig identities. You made substitutions. They're equivalent. We're doing the same thing here. These are all identities. Okay, well, left side's identical to the right. We can make a substitution. Just try to eliminate x's and y's and just end up with r's and theta's. After that, you can do a little bit of cleaning up, which is what we're going to do right now by dividing both sides by cosine theta. Okay, a little bit of rewriting. And so now these cancel. You can see that you're left with 6 over cosine theta. But what's 1 over cosine theta equal to? That's the secant of theta. So we can kind of write this a little bit more condensed as r equals 6 secant of theta. Remember, x equals 6. This is a vertical line, right, like this. Okay, so x equals 6, a vertical line. But this is also the same vertical line. It's just that this equation is in polar form. So great job if you're able to follow these four examples. I'll put a video right there where we talk about how to convert from the other direction. So instead of going to polar, we're going to go from polar back to rectangular uh, form of an equation. So let's take a look at that. I'll see you over in that video. I'll see you there.